Hello and welcome to the 19th installment of my Pokemon Generation 3 ROM hacking series. The focus of this tutorial is to finish discussing the last of the most important commands XSE has to offer. The topics will be scattershot, but definitely worth talking about. This video will be broken down into the following segments. How do spawn points work? How can I utilize multi-choice boxes in a script? And how do I allow the player to nickname a Pokemon? Following these segments will be an application demonstration. In this final part, we will be creating a proper Give Pokemon script, complete with the congratulatory jingle and the option to nickname the Pokemon. When the player loses a battle, he or she is teleported back to the most recently visited Poke Center. How does the game know which center was last visited? If you take a look at any of the center map level scripts, you'll notice that every single center has two of them, a Type 03 and a Type 05. Decompiling the Type 03 will just show one significant command, set healing place. This command has one parameter, that being a hex value representing a particular respawn point, such as Viridian City's Poke Center, the player's bedroom, or Cerulean City's Poke Center. Emerald and Ruby use this command as well, but the hex values of the respawn points are different than Fire Red. I'll post the values for each version in the video's description. Set healing place will be executed every time the player walks into a Poke Center which should be obvious since it's used in a Type 03 level script. The game knows which center to warp the player back to by which set healing place value was last set. In addition to the Type 03 level script, there's also the Type 05. Not only does every center have one of these, but every center's Type 05 script is set to the exact same offset. Decompiling this code at this offset shows just one significant command once again that being the special 0x182 command. I'm not entirely sure what this special does or why it exists in every Poke Center, but just to be safe, if you decide to make your own custom Poke Center with the default Nurse Joy script, I suggest using this special in a Type 05 level script. Emerald follows the same pattern, only it uses the value 0x1a4. The strange part about this is that Ruby version does not use this Type 05 level script. It just doesn't exist. So I guess you shouldn't worry about it if you're hacking Ruby. Multi-choice boxes allow us to display a bunch of different options simultaneously rather than just listing them out one after the other like a yes or no script. We're going to write a script in which an NPC asks us to choose our least tolerable status condition. After the message box command, type multi-choice. This command has four parameters, those being the X coordinate of the box, the Y coordinate of the box, the hex value denoting the specific list of options to display, and the ability to back out of the box by pressing the B button, respectively. The hex values denoting the specific list of options to display is posted in the description of this video. Unfortunately, there is no way to create new sets of options just using a script, so we'll have to use whatever the game provides for us. The value 0F denotes an option list that consists of sleep, poison, paralysis, burn, freeze, and exit, respectively, which is the list I will be using for this example. I'll be setting the final parameter to 0x0, meaning the player can hit the B button and skip making a selection from the multi-choice box. Now the NPC has to say something depending on what option the player chose. Each option can be denoted as a hex value as displayed in the comment I wrote after the multi-choice command. The first option returns 0x0 and the final option returns 0x5. The option that is chosen has its value stored in the variable last result. This means that we can use the compare command to check which value last result stores and react as necessary. But what if the player decides to hit the B button and not choose any of these options? If this is the case, last result will store the value 0x7f, so we need to accommodate for this option as well. If you don't want to have to deal with the extra option, set the final parameter of the multi-choice command to a non-zero value and the player will not be able to back out and will be forced to choose an option from the list. All that's left to do is to wrap up the script by filling out different pointer sections stemming from the multi-choice possibilities. Viewing the result, everything works out perfectly. Let's think about something while the example plays out. Whenever the multi-choice box pops up, the gray selection pointer begins at the very first option. In addition, the shape of the multi-choice box is rectangular and consists of a single column. We could also say that each row only consists of a single option, and there are six rows in the box. There are two more commands, multi-choice 2 and multi-choice 3. 
Multi-Choice 2 has five parameters. They are the X position, the Y position, the list of options, the default choice, and the exitability. The only new parameter here is the fourth one. We can specify which option in the list to start the gray selection arrow on when the multi-choice box initially pops up by using the hex value of the option to start on. For example, if we use the value 0x2 for the status inflictions list, the gray selection arrow would begin on paralysis instead of sleep. Multi-choice 3 allows us to change the shape of the box and move the options around a bit. The only new parameter here is the number of choices per row. If we set this value to 0x2, there would be two options per row in the box. This means the layout of the status inflictions would be a 2x3 grid. If you choose a value that doesn't completely fill in the grid, such as 0x4 or 0x0, some of the options may be cut off and that would not be desirable. Let's move on to the final topic, nicknaming a Pokemon. I didn't go over this in my exchanging possessions tutorial for a few reasons, mainly because we're going to be messing with variables and specials which we hadn't gotten to yet in that point in the series. We're going to write a script in which an NPC gives us a Charmander and asks if we want to give it a nickname. So far, the player interacts with the NPC who then gives the player a Charmander. The four lines after the Give Pokemon command are just to simulate the congratulatory message that usually pops up after the player obtains his or her starter. Next, we need to ask the player if he or she wants to give it a nickname. If not, we'll just end the script. If so, we'll start a new pointer section called at nickname. The first thing to write is the command count Pokemon. This command will store the amount of Pokemon in the player's party in last result. Before we continue further, I need to go over one thing. When we're referring to a specific Pokemon in the player's party, we need to keep in mind that the first in line is represented as 0x0 not 0x1. This means that if the player had a full party after receiving the Charmander, we can refer to the Charmander by using the value 0x5. In this case, Charmander will be the only Pokemon in our party, so this implies that we can refer to it using the value 0x0, since it's the first in line. The count Pokemon command will store the value 0x1 in last result since we have exactly one Pokemon in our party. After that, type sub var 0x800d 0x1. Of course, if you feel more comfortable typing last result instead of 0x800d, go ahead and do that. They're interchangeable. This command will subtract 0x1 from whatever value is stored in last result. Since count Pokemon stored the value 0x1 in last result, sub var will subtract that amount and last result now stores the value 0x0. Next, type copy var 0x8004, 0x800d. This will copy the value stored in last result to the variable 0x8004. Now both last result and 0x8004 store the value 0x0. We'll be needing this new variable due to the next command's functionality. Type fade screen 0x1, special 0x9e, then wait state. If you're hacking Ruby, the special value is still 0x9e. If you're hacking Emerald, use special 0xa1 instead. Fade screen 0x1 will fade the screen to darkness, as I've mentioned in a previous tutorial. Special 0x9e is the important command here. This command will initiate the nicknaming scenario and allow the player to type in a nickname for the Charmander. I use the wait state command so that script execution is halted until the player finishes nicknaming his or her Charmander. You might be wondering what happened to all the variable work we did in last result in 0x8004. Special 0x9e is the nicknaming scenario, right? When we nickname a Pokemon, the game needs to somehow know which Pokemon in the player's party it needs to apply the nickname to. As mentioned earlier, Charmander can be referenced with the value 0x0 since it's the first Pokemon in line. This particular special command is actually dependent upon the variable 0x8004 to tell it what Pokemon to apply the nickname to. That's why we copied the value 0x0 from last result to 0x8004 in the first place, to comply with special 0x9e's functionality. Finally, let's wrap up the script with release then end. That was a hefty script, but it all looks like it paid off. We're given a Charmander, asked to give it a nickname, and then the script terminates. 
That's everything I plan to discuss in this tutorial. Using the information we've learned, we will create an event in which the player chooses between an Eevee, Vaporeon, Jolteon, or a Flareon using a multi-choice box. The player will then be able to nickname the Eeveelution. I had a lot of trouble deciding what to name this video since the topics were so scattershot. After a while, I came to the realization that we basically just revamped what we already talked about in previous videos. The multi-choice box is a more efficient way of displaying layers of yes or no questions, and nicknaming Pokémon is a much more professional or proper add-on to giving the player a Pokémon. Of course, there's also respawn points, but not every one of my video's titles hints at every topic I talk about. I try not to make the video titles boring and just list what topics will be covered like most other tutorials do, but I also try to stray from making them too ambiguous. Basically, I like to have fun with it because I like what I'm doing. I originally titled this video That's a Wrap because this is the last scripting video besides some advice and errata videos that are coming up soon. I talked about how this series is gradually reaching its expiration date due to me having to move away for college, but I'm not going to go further into this topic until the time comes. I just wanted to let you know that every scripting topic you'll need for creating a ROM hack has now been covered, excluding some additional tips and tricks which I'll get to soon. We're about at the end of creating this script. Everything that went into making this has been taught to you through this tutorial. Hopefully you all learned something valuable from this, and if you have any questions, please feel free to ask either over at Poke Community or right here in my video's comments section. Thank you so much for being my audience, and I'll be back in the 20th installment of this series.